to continue the conversation, you mentioned the uh, mock Newberries and Caldecotts. Did you want to make a prediction? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yes, I do. I do want to make a prediction. Okay, here's what I think. And I was saying this before the National Book Award crazy controversy, by the way, but Brown Girl Dreaming, this is Jackie's year. Right. Okay, so clearly. And when she won the National Book Award, that was the moment where I was like, okay, so we haven't had a children's book win the National Book Award and the Newbery since Holes. And this is the year because, think about it, think about it. We've got the rise of We Need Diverse Books. Mm -hmm. Jackie's book is clearly superior to so many other books out there. Now the buzz is already huge on this book. It deserves it. It's magnificent. No other book can touch it at this point. It's possible that some other book is going to come out of left field and, 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 and sweep the winnings. And God help the Newberry Committee if that happens, because everybody, I think, at this point is rooting for Brown Girl Dreaming. So I don't think that's going to influence the committee, but I think if you look at it, it really is the most distinguished book of the year. Um, and she's never won the Newberry Award proper. So this is her moment. This is her day. This is her year. I haven't felt this confident since The Lion and the Mouse came out with Jerry Pinkney. This is, this is it. So that's the Newberry. Okay. Then there's the Caldecott. Um, the Caldecott is impossible for me to predict. I always predict something and then a ball for Daisy or something comes out and I'm just like, where did that come from? So I don't even know. This year, I think what is going to win is not what I would like to win. What I would like to win would be Three Bears in a Boat by mm -hmm. David Soman, which I think is just exquisite and has a very delightful, obscure Go Dog Go reference in the art. Um, what is going to win could easily, and this would be very interesting, if it's Raoul Cologne's draw, it's been getting on every single best of list with possible exception of one, and it's beautifully done. He's never won a Caldecott proper, so, I think draw has a real chance, um, but I could be completely wrong. Well, we'll just have to wait till early February yes. as for the announcement. Exciting. Yes. So you served on the Newberry Committee one year. What I did. What year was that? Scrotum year. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. That was the year that um, <laughs> the word scrotum was on the first page of The Higher Power of Lucky. Uh, right. 2007 uh, was the Newberry year. So, so can you share any uh, stories about the uh, committee? Normally one cannot, mm -hmm. um, but this has nothing to do with the choices of the books in any way. Um, my year, uh, committee members were encouraged to bring a regional food uh, from your area of the country. And everybody did, but what everyone brought involved chocolate. So you were here in this committee room with a wall of chocolate. I'm talking everything from the Buckeyes from Ohio and lavender chocolate and, and dark chocolate and just a million different kinds of chocolate. So, you know, if my award was influenced by anything, it was by lovely, lovely chocolate. That was a sweet, safe story. Thank you. Well, speaking of awards and lists, mm. uh, that uh, I, one of the things I learned reading this book, even though I am a contributing editor for a school library journal, that at one time they had an annual award for like the worst book of the year. They did. For like a 10 or so years. More, like, yeah, 10 years they would print the worst illustrated children's book and the worst written children's book every year and these weren't you know fly by night you know books they were major authors and illustrators and they were calling them out and i have talked to at least one author who, today who was like yeah i was on the i was on the train once with a woman who made those choices and i thought about saying something but i didn't but it still rankled you could tell it still rankled so yeah so why don't uh, we resurrect this list. Oh, oh yes. yes, the time has come. Yes, yes. so, so if said. you were, if this list were still around, mm. I'm sure you must have a choice. Yes, here is the advantage of doing it in the 21st century, and this was not the case when it came out back then. Um, today, we have a plethora of horrible books done by major publishers every year, and they're all done by celebrities. And it's wonderful because criticizing these books is like, like throwing darts at nothingness because they don't care. They're going to get the sales anyway. They get, like, they're Teflon. Criticism just bounces right off of them. So I can name them and it's not going to hurt them a jot. Um, so let's see. For the award for worst writing in a children's book, um, I'm actually going to call out 
poor Mr. Russell Brand. Um, Mr. Russell Brand, who was just not that long ago, uh, mentioned in the talk of a town piece of The New Yorker for this book. He's done, um, he's got a new series, Russell Brand's Trickster Tales. And he's begun with the Pied Piper. And he has um, done what a lot of, in the, in about 15 years ago when Madonna was doing her celebrity books, um, she would say things like, um, yeah, I'm making children's books because I looked and there's like no good children's books for kids out there. Um, and so she would write her own, which of course would make us all very angry. These days the celebrities have decided that children's books are too sweet and therefore they need to be a little more subversive which is far more annoying in some ways than what Madonna was doing. So Mr. Brand has decided to write a book for children that has many very long words and um, is very uh, sub subversive and, and, and it is a really good idea, an excellent idea. In fact, um, if he had just reeled it back just a bit or the editor had edited it, sorry editor, uh, it would have been pretty darn good. But the problem is it's not for kids. It's not for kids. It's not even for those smart kids who know long words. It's adult. It's got an adult sensibility. And it's illustrated by Chris Riddell, who's a genius. So it looks like it's for kids. The art is amazingly for kids, but the text just is not. Um, you've got everything from kids like putting um, pins through their nipples, which are then bleeding everywhere, to ungodly amounts of poop. I'm fine with poop. I like poop. Uh, Tom Engelberger's Poop Fountain book that came mm -hmm. out this year, mwah, couldn't do poop better. Poop when done well is just delightful. Um, but this is just poop for poop's sake. And it's scatological without humor. And, you know, and it just, and it's long. And then the Pied Piper comes on and he's clearly supposed to be Russell Brand, but Russell Brand a la Clockwork Orange because it's clearly Clockwork Orange. He's got the bowler hat. He's got the one eye thing. And you just read it and you're just like, I don't even know what's going on. So yes, Russell Brand's Trickster Tales. Uh, terrible, terrible book. Um, well, calling that out. <laughs> now, as a blogger and as uh, your role in uh, NYPL, you, get, uh, you have the opportunity to meet many people in the kid-lit world. Mm -hmm. So this is a two-part question. Do you ever get nervous or excited about meeting someone? And, and if so, who? I do. Um, it's funny. So when I was first starting out, I was very nervous around a lot of people. Um, and in fact, there was, there was a time when I was so nervous around, uh, around well, uh, around Daniel Handler. Mm -hmm. um, that if he came into a room, I would exit the room because I was so intimidated by him. Um, and that, as I get, got more comfortable with my role um, and, and with meeting people, I, 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 I got, you know, I, I didn't get quite as nervous. But there are still moments when I am very nervous around people. Um, there's a certain level of fame. So, um, Judy Bloom. I have been in the rooms with Judy Bloom several times. I have never said, a, I've said, I think I once said uh, one word to her. She was coming to speak to some NYPL librarians and we had a whole table of cookies out. And I came up and as I was coming up, I was like, that's Judy Bloom, that's Judy Bloom, that's Judy Bloom. Crap, that's Judy Bloom. She goes, stay, be cool, be cool, Betsy, be cool. And I was like going up to the cookies. And she was like, well, they, they all look so good. And I'm like, yeah, the black and white ones are really great. And that was like the one thing I said to Judy Bloom for about five, six years until I interviewed her for SLJ. Um, so yeah. I, you know, when, when people are like really famous and they were around when I was a kid, I get nervous around them. And apparently if they're British, um, I got very nervous around um, a British author, uh, Frances Hardinge. Uh, she's done some amazing books. She's got a book coming out actually next year called Cuckoo Song. That is amazing. Um, it's a 2015 book. And um, then I did meet J.K. Rowling once. Oh, really? I did. It was in a book signing, so it doesn't even count. You know, it was one of those situations. It was when she had written her, her adult book. Right. And so I waited in the line, and you get about three seconds while she, you know, you hand her the book, and she signs it. And what do you, what do you say to mm -hmm. J.K. Rowling? You don't, you, you can't. It's like, you're the reason I went into children's literature. Ha ha, bye. Um, <laughs> There's nothing you can say. So I, I did not say anything of significance to her whatsoever, but her eyes are so blue. Ah. So blue. Like yours. Yes. yes. Well, well, bluer. Bluer. Oh, bluer. Bluer. Yes. Mine, mine. Well, who would you uh, like to meet either living or dead? Oh, I can, can, I, can I say two people? Yes. Okay. And they play very prominent roles in my book. Mm -hmm. um, 
James Marshall, mm -hmm. definite, you know, creator of George and Martha. Um, I think Sendak referred to him as the Wicked Angel. Mm -hmm. um, just a hoot of a guy. Would have been hilarious to have known him. Um, so I would have loved to have known him. And Trina Schardheimen. Oh, how I wish I had met Trina Schardheimen. I, I so wish she had been around when I got into this business. And, uh, and I just missed her in some ways. And it's a real pity because, oh, the stories that we have about her in the book. Just the stuff she worked in snuck into the book. Oh, yeah, she, uh, that would have been lovely. Well, thanks for writing this book. It's a Wild Things. It is published by Candlewick, and it's available at your local bookstore and library, right? It is. Well, thanks for joining us. Well, thanks tonight. for having yeah. me. So lovely. Remember, until next time, give a kid a book in any format. <laughs>